my channel. Today's video is the tutorial or the makeup look that I wore in my September favorites. I had so many requests to do a tutorial on that look so I didn't really have anything planned for the rest of the week and I thought I would just sit down and recreate it since so many people wanted to see it. I'm also going to be using the Lorac Mega Pro 2 palette which I featured in my monthly favorites. A lot of people wanted to see this in action. Um, so yeah, this is the look. It's just a very soft mauve look kind of transitioning into fall a little bit very easy to recreate uh so if you are interested let's go ahead and start all right so to prime my lids i'm using tarte shape tape concealer and this is because my eyelids were really dry when i filmed this i had just gotten back from the beach and i needed to conceal that and really just make my lids look soft and smooth and an opaque base like this will really help to just conceal everything and just make it look super soft super fresh so that's what i did there and then to set that concealer i used the shade called bisque in the mega pro 2 palette by Lorac. just use this again to soften up the eyes and set the primer to make sure that my shadows don't skip and that they apply nice and smooth for a transitional shade i'm using the color sorbet i love this color this is like an everyday go-to crease color for me. I am obsessed with it. It reminds me a lot of the shade that was in the Stila in the Lights palette. That's just kind of like that mauve tone shade. I'm a sucker for just beigey pink and mauve transitional colors. I think they complement my skin tone a lot better than a orange or warm or red uh, transitional color that you see a lot nowadays that seems to be like the trend um, but yeah I just really love kind of just like this light pink crease color I don't know I dig it and I love the color sorbet so I just used that in my crease um, built it up quite a bit and then I went in with the shade called goji now goji is more of a red tone shade it's very cranberry-esque uh, but it's really pretty and it almost almost kind of shifts into like a purpley tone especially if you add brown on top of it so I just applied that with more of a smudger brush to the outer corner of my eyes and then I uh, took a blending brush and just worked on blending out the edges and also blending it slightly into my crease and this is just to again intensify add some depth before we smoke this out and make it a little darker but don't you love those shades like already I don't know I just love 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 these colors I think it's a nice spin on like a fall eye but not too dramatic of a fall eye just really soft and pretty then I added uh, I think it's called Cabernet yeah Cabernet it's again a very uh, red tone brown but like I said when you layer it on top of that goji shade you can see it's kind of transforming into a little bit of a purple shade which uh, I didn't expect when I first used this palette but I kind of like the way it turned out obviously I'm recreating the look here and so many people requested it it was just so weird I didn't think anybody would really care about this look but you guys really liked it um, and then just to brighten up the center of my eye since I didn't really do anything there I just mix sorbet and bisque and just pop that on um, the center of my eye I lay down a little bit of black shadow for uh, lashes I took uh, some pretty thick falsy so I wanted to have a base down and I just applied a quick coat of MAC extended play giga black lash one of my favorite mascaras and then for lashes I used Ardell's faux mink lashes in the style 111 they're gorgeous really spiky lashes which I'm not used to but I liked them and then we're going to move into the face and come back to the eyes. I use Smashbox Primerizer. This has really been like the only primer I've been using for the past couple months. And for foundation, I'm using Charlotte Tilbury's Light Wonder. I'm using this mainly because, uh, again, when I filmed this, my skin was just so dry. And this is one of the few foundations that does not pick up on dry patches. Uh, I have very few in my collection that actually sit well on my skin when it's textured and when it's really dry and this is one of them it's a phenomenal everyday foundation definitely in my top five favorite foundations i absolutely love it so much so if you haven't tried it out i would highly recommend it now for concealer uh, i forgot to insert a shot here but i mixed um <laughs> Oh my god i forgot what i mixed um oh no i remember now i mixed uh urban decay 
um, Naked Skin Concealer with NARS Radiant Creamy. That's what I mix. Yes. Okay, so I never use NARS Radiant Creamy, but everybody always raves about it, so I pulled it out again, and I was like, you know what? I'll mix it with one of my favorites. So I mixed it with Urban Decay Naked Skin, and I actually like the way it looked a lot better than using it on my own. Am I the only one out there that really wasn't crazy about the Radiant Creamy Concealer? Let me know. Uh, to set that, I'm using the NARS Crystal Translucent Powder. Haven't pulled this bad boy out in a while, but I remembered why I loved it so much. It is so invisible on the skin. It just looks really nice and soft. To contour, I just took a little bit of uh, Makeup Forever Contour Shade. Honestly, I have no clue what the number is because I can't get these out of the palette. They're supposed to be magnetic, but they're in there so tight that I can't even get my nail in the palette to pull them out and to see what shade I'm using. So honestly, I have no clue. This was pre-made. Makeup Forever sent it to me. It's just a really cool toned contour shade. And then I took a little bit of the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and just used that along my hairline and just to finish bronzing up my skin and giving it um, a tad bit more color. For blush, I used Max Mocha, and this is a really purpley, cool toned blush. I wouldn't say purpley, um, but it do definitely does have a little hint of a purple hue to it. Uh, very cool toned blush. It's also a really great everyday blush. I just thought it matched the eyes really nicely, so I just applied that to my cheeks with one of my new Smashbox brushes. I love these brushes. These are some really good brushes, you guys. And then I sat my face with Max Fix Plus, an oldie but a goodie. And then to highlight, I used another oldie but a goodie, Max Soft and Gentle. I love this highlighter. It looks so good. Like, it, I just kind of always count on Soft and Gentle to look bomb. It just makes the skin look bomb. So I just applied that all over to add a little bit more glow. And then I moved back to the eyes and I just mix Goji and Cabernet and just kind of smudge that on my lower lash line. Nothing fancy at all. I didn't want to go overboard with the lower lash line. I wanted to keep it pretty simple. And I took the shade in the palette called Chiffon and I applied that into my inner corner. I wanted the eyes to be all matte pretty much. So nothing cray cray on the inner corner or on the lower lash line. I just popped a bit of, again, MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash on and called it a day for the eye look. For my lips, I'm using one of the new Bite Beauty lip liners. Uh, I'll have to list the number down below. I literally have no clue. I randomly picked it up in Sephora several months ago. Forgot that I bought it because I put it in my lip drawer and I, I found it. I found it the other day and I was like, you know what? We're going to use this. And then for lipstick, I'm using a combo of MAC Syrup with MAC Playing Koi. Uh, so two very different lipsticks. I, I honestly was just playing around and I liked it. And the lip gloss is um, Danny by Buxom. So this is the completed look for my September favorites. I changed up a couple of things, mainly the lip color, uh, but that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to leave your questions down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.